All right, you ready, Heggy? Let's go. Let's go see what's going on in the shop today. Come on, after you. Yep, I'm coming, don't you worry. Oh, got a lot of work to do on that one. This guy is looking pretty good though, I have to say. Alrighty. Today, we've gone through, we've made a lot of progress, we've cut a lot of holes in this piece of wood, um, a little bit roughly, um, to go through and get our shots going. So remember we had this nice CNC lower play field, things look nice and crisp, good shots, but um, good cuts I mean. But yeah, we've, uh, we've iterated a little bit. If you remember this flipper over here? I think we've ended up moving that, so that's probably close to two inches. <laughs> So yeah, we've, uh, we've iterated along the way, um, but a lot of this, I mean, the scoop ended up getting moved. This hole for the subway is not quite where it needs to be. Um, all these shots are pretty rough. These drop targets, if you look, these are not like equally spaced. There's a little bit bigger gap in the back one than the middle. It's time to go through and clean all that up. So not necessarily the sexiest work or the most fun, but it's worth it. So we gotta go through and measure the placement of all these mechanics, um, all these mechs, and all the holes, the postals, all the things, all the holes we've made, cuts in the wood, we've gotta go through and measure them, get them back into Fusion 360, clean them up so that we can go through and ta-da, cut out white wood number three, I believe we're on. And uh, then we can have something a little more clean to work with. So yeah, a lot of it's just gonna be simply, or literally just going through and measuring where these cuts are, okay? Turning them into more precise, square or round um, numbers and measurements, right? We'll, we'll make this more precise and uniform. I guess symmetrical isn't really the word right, but we'll make them more uniform, more precise. We'll make sure that their things are equally spaced the way they should be so it looks all nice and professional. And that means we're gonna actually be altering these slightly from how they are currently on the play field, okay? So we've gotta measure where they're at currently. We have gotta put them into Fusion 360. At least this is my current process, the way I'm looking at it. Maybe there's a better way. <laughs> Let me know if you guys have done this before and how you do it. But my thought is we'll go through, we'll measure them. I'll transfer that into my laptop on Fusion 360. We'll put them in there. And then in Fusion 360, as I'm doing that, I'll be like, oh, this is, you know, 60 millimeters. This one's 57. Oh, let's make them all 58 or, you know, something like that. I'll go through and try to like make it a little more precise and uniform in the 3D model. But then since it is going to make some differences, I've got to then, my assumption is come back through and just kind of like, re-verify them. So take those final measurements after I've tweaked them in Fusion 360 to make them a little more uniform and come back out and measure them back out again and just really visualize and make sure I'm not moving anything one way or another that I feel is going to you know, run into like a ball guide placement or, or cause other problems. You just need to kind of double, triple check those tweaks. Because um, then once we have all that, and we're going to go through and cut out another play field. Again, like I said, well, white wood number three. And uh, I've got I've got to come clean with you guys. So and everybody says, you know, we start a YouTube channel. Make sure, you know, you show all your mistakes. People like to see where you're learning from mistakes and all that. And I've tried to do that. I've tried to be pretty, pretty clear on just, here's what I'm going and doing. You know, I don't really try to hide things, but there is one thing that I was super embarrassed by that I, I'll come clean on. This play field. So originally, if you remember one of the other uh, play field design videos, I talked about, you know, the standard dimensions are 20 and a quarter inches by 45 inches deep. Well, since I knew I was going to be building the stair mech, I didn't tell you, but I was like, I'm going to make mine 46. Just I have that extra inch to really make sure I have room for this, okay? And that would have been fine. I think you can get away with that if you don't go behind it. But have you also realized, you know, as we went through, uh, I decided to have this ramp that comes up with a diverter that goes behind, well behind this back piece of wood. In fact, it was out like another four inches because we want to have clearance for what's going to be going on up here in the upper play field. Well, I put that back in my cabinet, just never really thought it through. Of course, I went to like lift up the play field. It, it, it didn't fit. It did not fit. It was sticking out. It was way too long. So I come back through uh, in between one of my other videos and just, I cut this down a little too short. This is down to like 43 and a half inches is all I've been working on for the last couple of videos, which is why this part back here around by the subway, this diverter is so tight. <laughs> I'm sure a couple of you are watching like, I don't know if that's really going to fit a ball back there anymore, Steve. Well, it doesn't. So long story short, I got to come back through. The next white wood is going to be 45 inches long, which is where I should have started. And I've measured everything and it will clear in the back of the cabinet. I was just about an inch off was all. Anyway, I will need to move the power filter board and that nano controller. I had those like in the back, inside back wall of the cabinet. I'm gonna move those to a different place just to make sure 
when you're t um, tilting the playfield up and down, it doesn't happen. And I want to make sure there's a good clearance there. So, so yeah, so we'll get back to a standard size play field and then we'll have room. This is the area we're going to have to need to kind of iterate on um, the most again. So hopefully that's not too boring for you, but I'll be putting, putting up some new videos about the subway and this horseshoe diverter because we've got to tweak that quite a bit. A couple of you picked up on that also saying, when this is all the way down, Steve, and you make this shot from the left, where does it go? Well, right now it doesn't really go anywhere like it's supposed to. So we've got to, we've got to fix that, but we will. We'll get there. Um, yeah. Okay, so that's where we're going today. A lot of the measuring, digitizing, coming back and forth, and eventually we'll have a new play field cut out that looks good, that we can then continue on from there and feel pretty, pretty good about where things are at. Okay, let's get to it. All right, everybody, here we are a couple days later. We've got ourselves a nice CNC play field with the new holes for those mechs. Um, I lost one of the videos that was supposed to be in between here to go through and tell you exactly how I measured these things out. So I'm gonna recreate that real fast. You can see I've depopulated this play field. Okay, that was obviously step number one. I've got a box full of parts over here, a bowl with a bunch of screws and flipper bats. So everything's been taken off. And then we went through and we digitized these uh, holes into Fusion 360. So how we did that, okay. I found there's like three primary measurements that you need to know in order to be able to do this accurately and consistently, okay? First and foremost, most obvious, you need to know the dimensions of the, of the hole that you're cutting out of your play field, right? The shape, if it's a circle, like for this flipper bat post here, you need to know the diameter, okay? And then for something like, say like this scoop, it's a, it's a polygon, right? It's roughly a square. You need to know those dimensions. So here's my scoop, it's from Pinball Life. This one is 37 millimeters wide by 36 millimeters deep. I don't want to do it exact. I give myself about a millimeter buffer on each of those. So I went 38 millimeters by 37 millimeters. I probably could have gone two millimeters buffer on either side, um, just so things slide in and out quickly, but up to you to determine how you want to do that. But I would advise giving yourself at least a millimeter buffer. Um, otherwise it's just super tight, you know, wood and things expand and contract by temperature and humidity. Yeah. So, um, so you have the dimensions of the shape, right? So I know I needed a square that's 38 millimeters by 36 or 37 millimeters. But now how do I know where to put it? Now that I know the size of my shape, for a circle, you wanna know where your center point is at, okay? And you just wanna pick two sides, obviously probably the two closest sides, right? So for this hole, I needed to know how far from the edge it was, okay? The center point here is 65 millimeters. And then from another edge, I picked the front edge or the bottom edge here of my play field. You could go from the top, it doesn't matter, okay? And this one is 605 millimeters up from the bottom. I'm guessing right now, right? I had it written down specifically, but you need to get that. Take your time measuring, double, triple, quadruple check. Cause there's, I mean, we're doing a homebrew, right? There's gonna be some variance here and there, you know, between cutting this um, play field and the next white wood, exactly how I lined up on the CNC machine. Things might be off by a millimeter. Uh, there's just, there's a lot of variance in things, right? We're not super, super precise like the actual manufacturers. So take your time, try to get that as accurately as, as you can. So um, you need to understand, so for a circle, you have those two measurements. For a square, okay, for a simple square, you're gonna do that basically twice. You need to pick a corner, okay? So on squares, I like to pick two corners on the same side. I find that simplest to work with in Fusion 360, not like opposites, okay, and I'll show you why. So let's say I'm doing this top corner, right? I come over here, this bottom corner, I guess, right? And again, from the front of my play field, up I measure, I'm at 610 millimeters, okay? So I'm gonna write that down. And then from an edge, obviously the closest edge, I'm gonna go through and plus 12 millimeters for a half inch here of this piece of wood. I'm at 56, so we're gonna say um, 68, okay? So that's gonna be the corner point for this, um, the corner, the measurements for this point right here, this corner of the square. Okay, so write all that down. And then right then, I go into Fusion 360 and I will take a line, I will create my sketch, and then I'll take the line tool and I'll click from this bottom edge and I will come up and you can type in the amount, 610, boom. It's gonna put it up here. 
and I'm just kind of guessing about where the 68 millimeters is from the edge, right? It doesn't have to be exact right now. I get to my 610, I've now got a line it drew, it drew with a point. And then I go through and I draw another line from the edge, okay? And now I line it up, the 610, I can line that up inside Fusion 360, come out to the edge, start my line, and come in exactly 68, and we'll then see where it crosses that line, right? And where those two cross, bam, that's gonna be the, you know, the, the cross mark, that little X marks the spot for that corner, okay? So then I, I make a mark there in Fusion 360, okay? And then I do the next corner. It could have been either this one or this one, but make sure they're on the same side. It makes it easier in Fusion 360 because it's gonna automatically do some things for you. So for the next edge, we go through measure it and we say it's you know 610 probably with about another 30 millimeters, let's say it's 640. And then, you know, instead of 68 millimeters in, maybe it's 58 millimeters in. Okay, get those new two measurements and do the same thing again. Draw up and then draw over where those meet. That's your second line, <coughs> your second dot, right? Now you have these two dots. All you have to do is draw a line between them to connect them. And it should come out to your, you know, 37 millimeters that we wanted for this, right? Once that looks good, okay, you can kind of erase and delete those extra lines. You don't need them anymore if you don't want them. Um, you've got your first line in. Fusion 360 is going to assume you're probably doing squares or 45. Like it's going to kind of jump. It's going to snap to these certain angles for you, right? So even though we now have kind of this, this crooked line, this diagonal line, according to you know, the axis for our play field, we can just start at either one of those corners and start drawing out a line, and it'll snap to 90 degrees. And then you just type in you know, 38 millimeters now. Boom, it'll jump there. And then you do the next one down, boom, and it'll snap to 90 degrees, and you've got your square. And then you take the action right, push-pull to push it through the material, and, and you've got your whole infusion. So. First measurement is the size of the shape you're pushing through. Second measurement is one of those corners. If it's a circle, it's just the center point, and there's really just those two. For polygons, squares, and rectangles, you want to have two corners. If you have something that's more complex than that, I end up kind of having like this like T-shaped thing here, right? For me, I find it simple to, or simplest to break things down into simple shapes. So I basically looked at that and said, hey, that's two rectangles, okay? I've got my big rectangle, so I did those measurements. And then I've got a skinny rectangle coming across, okay? Or you could say I've got one rectangle here and then two small squares on either side. It, it's kind of the same, right? Um, but for me, it's like, okay, here's my two points. I know this point. I know the height. I know the, the width. And then you can put it in. So that's really pretty much it. Um, so far, I found that, I mean, that works for almost anything. Let's look at something perhaps even more complex. So like down here for the slingshots, okay? If I was doing these slingshots, totally brand new. This is kind of a funky shape. You got kind of like a square, but then these angles and then super rounded on this side. Always try to do curves last in fusion. That's what I've been finding, right? It's like I've got these squares, but I've kind of like beveled the corners. They're not super sharp. They have just a little bit of kind of a curve to them, a little bit softer. Always do all that like very, very, very last. Once you know everything else is exactly where you want it to be, then you go through and bevel your edges. Because if you need to go through and make changes, you basically have to kind of like delete those bevels so you can really be pushing your edges around and it's just best to do all your bevels and, and contours last, I found. So for this shape down here, and even this one here, this was, you know, for the, um, for the, for the lever, for the slingshot that kicks back and forth, I just did it as a rectangle, measured the distances, okay? Once it was done, I knew I liked it. Then I went through and beveled these edges to make them basically just perfectly round like an oval, okay? And that's, that's totally up to you. That's how Stern's been doing it for some machines. You could pick your own pattern, right? There's lots of different layouts that people have been doing for slingshots over the years as far as where you want your light. I digress. For this shape down here, I basically looked at it as a smaller little rectangle here. And then I went through and I measured down, um, you know, the, how long this line is, uh, this edge, and how long this edge is, and the distance between them here across at the bottom. Again, kind of thinking of it like an interesting, like, Interesting polygon. I don't know what the shape would actually be. Not a rhombus, I don't know, but not a square, obviously, right? But it's gonna have four sides. The bottom edge of this rectangle, this side, the bottom edge, and then this side coming in at an angle. So I measure, I would measure all those out, get that in fusion, and then I come through and say, okay, now these edges here, I want this to be a complete smooth edge. And then you take these two corners and you bevel them up until it becomes round, and naturally you've got your curve, and then you can go through and do a little bevel here, and next thing you know, you have that cool looking shape. So that's my last um, tip and trick, I guess I would say, is break complex shapes down into simple shapes and then just kind of combine them one by one. The next thing you know, you've got the full shape. Okay, that was long-winded, sorry. Um, hopefully that was helpful.
And then that's really kind of it for today. After that, it's going through and just repopulating, putting all this stuff back on. The one thing I guess I should say, to be totally clear and honest here, you might notice there's a couple of giant gaping holes up here that I don't have over here in this play field. This was the hole for the subway that is kind of hacked in where I had room. And then this is the curve for that horseshoe diverter. As I said in one of my last videos, the horseshoe diverter, the way I ended up doing it, because of the length of the play field, this is now the actual 45 inches long. This one was shorter. I've got to redo that horseshoe diverter because the metal ball guides have to be a little bit different length. And I've got to um, reshape it so that those curves on that um, top of the horseshoe, whether the ball gate for that diverter is up or down, I want to make sure the balls are going in the correct path. So I've got to take some time to redo that. So I haven't cut that one back out yet because that's going to change. Okay, so there we are. We're going to repopulate. And then next video, we're going to mess around with the horseshoe diverter. Um, I've also got some fun stuff going on with wire forms. That would seem to be a pretty popular video. Um, a couple of people were asking me like, hey, isn't there like something with your 3D printer you can do to make these bends and things more consistent? I've got an idea. I'm going to be experimenting with it. Um, so that'll be another video coming up soon too. Okay, guys. Hope this has been helpful. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you next time. And if you haven't started your own pinball machine yet, do it. What are you waiting for? Start building your own. See you guys. Bye-bye.